The video you're seeing on screen right now is a video of the Nintendo 64 being unveiled at E3 in May 1996. In the following month, the Nintendo 64 console would be officially released in a variety of regions, first released in Japan on the 23rd of June and later in the US on the 29th of September. Most stores started selling the system today, and they've already sold out. Toys R Us had the largest shipment available to the public, and before noon, they were sold out. Super Mario 64, the something if title in the Mario franchise, was one of the Nintendo 64's launch titles, one of the earliest 3D platformer games, and one of the most critically acclaimed, impactful, and iconic games, period. It's been 26, coming up on 27 years since Super Mario 64 was released, and large communities of people online have formed since, dissecting this game, rebuilding it from the ground up, and doing all sorts of crazy things with it. In this video, I'll be talking about how online players have been pushing Super Mario 64 to its limits. Let's go! Speedrunning is the practice of playing a game as fast as possible with a large competitive scene surrounding it. One of the most popular games for speedrunning is Super Mario 64, and routes and strategies for speedrunning the game have come very far in the last 20 years. The Nintendo 64's release in 1996 coincided with the popularization of home computers and internet access, and while speedrunning of video games had existed since the early 1980s, the internet becoming more and more accessible during the 1990s and 2000s thousands popularized speedrunning far more than seen before. Much of the early online discussion about Super Mario 64 and beating the game in the fastest time possible occurred on forums like Twin Galaxies, Neo Seeker, and GameFAQs. Keep in mind, there aren't too many video clips or images from this time period as accessible video hosting sites like the YouTube we have today didn't exist yet. While Super Mario 64 has 120 total stars, it was well known that it only requires 70 stars to beat the game. Some of the earliest known Super Mario 64 speedrun times were posted in the early 2000s, without videos to back them up, though most of them took about an hour to beat the game. In 2000, however, two brothers in Mexico discovered that the game could be beaten with 50 stars instead of 70, using a glitch called the Backwards Long Jump or BLJ. For context, the final boss stage is locked behind this staircase which gives off the illusion of being infinite until you hit 70 stars and the game allows you to travel up the staircase. With the Backwards Long Jump though, this infinite staircase could be skipped entirely, and 20 whole stars could be cut out of the speedrun. To pull this off, you were meant to face the camera and long jump in the middle of the staircase, but aim Mario backward as you long jump and repeat. This this would build up speed and propel you backward incredibly fast, allowing you to skip the infinite staircase. This trick was brought up in a game FAQ's thread three years later, as one of their friends told the original poster about the glitch, and the poster would provide a short video recording. The earliest video recording of a backwards long jump, and the earliest known video recording of a speedrunning trick in Mario 64 being pulled off. The backwards long jump trick had been discovered by developers and skilled players as far back as 1996, when it was mentioned in this magazine in December of that year, with pictures of a player beating the game at 31 stars. Though it's safer to say the Club Nintendo Mexico magazine from 2000 led to game FAQ's users discovering it. Users in the thread would discover three days later that the same trick could be used to limit the number of stars needed to beat the game down to 31. By performing the same glitch on a different staircase, the time needed to beat Mario 64 had been cut in half. When online users caught wind of the backwards long jump, it was discovered that the trick can not only be done on staircases, but moving elevators and low-hanging ceilings, too. A year later, in May 2004, a game FAQ's user named Dom Dunk would post a screenshot of them playing the final boss stage of the game with only 18 stars, though it was previously thought that at least 31 were needed to enter the level, already needing glitches to do so. The original poster told users that they would tell the form the method in 5 days, and 5 days later they revealed the glitch, which cut the number of stars needed to beat the game from 31 to 16 stars. This glitch is now known as the Mips Clip, named after the Mips Rabbit. To perform the glitch, you had to catch Mips the Rabbit in the downstairs area of the castle, clip through the downstairs door using the rabbit, pick him up, and then use the rabbit to clip into the room that holds both Dire Dire Docks and the second boss fight stage. Some of the earliest recorded Super Mario 64 speedruns were published online around this time, dating back to June 2004. So far, we've seen the number of stars needed to beat the game go from 70 stars to 50, then to 31, all the way down to 16 stars. 
Before I explain this next part, I have to talk about tool assisted speedruns, usually known as tasking. Tool assisted speedruns, separate from human performed speedruns, are speedruns programmed frame by frame by a user for a computer to execute, made to pull off frame perfect tricks, impossible for humans to execute, and beat the game in the shortest amount of time, as perfectly as possible. In October 2006, a known tasser and game FAQs user named Mr. Robert Z, who had been showcasing Super Mario 64 glitches on his account on the fairly new website YouTube for the last few months, posts a video showing off a variety of glitches he had found in the main area of the castle. He learns that by jumping at the right spot on a staircase, he can clip into a wall with a low ceiling above him, a perfect spot to pull off a BLJ. Though it was unknown at this point in time if this BLJ opportunity would actually be useful for future speedruns. There's even proof of this lobby glitch being used for BLJing as far back as January 2007, though it wasn't used in speedruns until later that year. A year later, users on a variety of task-related forums, such as task videos, realized the potential of this trick and tried it out. They found out that they could launch themselves out of bounds and navigate the castle at insanely quick speeds, allowing them to bypass doors that previously required a defined amount of stars to enter. In August 2007, Tasser's Sword Lincoln AK discovered the SBLJ, a sideways BLJ that could be performed outside the door used for the MIPS clip mentioned earlier. The tassers used Mr. Robert Z's castle clip trick and the SBLJ trick, mixed with the tricks seen before to reduce the number of stars needed to beat the game, all the way down to one star. The game now took 7 minutes to beat when only 4 years ago, people were wondering if you could do it in less than an hour. The only star needed for these 1 star runs was the Dire Dire Dock star needed to exit the door and back into the main castle, though it was found out that even this star wasn't needed, and that SBLJs could be used to skip Dire Dire Docks entirely, going straight to the second boss level. It's December 2007, and beating Super Mario 64 in 5 minutes with 0 out of 120 total stars is now possible. Online speedrunners had gone from 120 stars, to 70 stars, to 50 stars, to 31 stars, to 16 stars, to 1 star, and all the way down to no stars, needed to beat the game in just 5 years. 1 star and 0 star route were initially thought to be impossible for humans to execute, with there even being a 3 year gap between the first task 1 star run and the first human made 1 star run. Speedrunning categories for 120, 70, 16, 1, and 0 stars exist to this day, and are notably active with people choosing their favorite category to speedrun, instead of trying to reduce the number of stars needed to beat Mario 64 further. World record holding runs in each category have been shortened so many times that the current day record holders are so optimized that they can last months months, even years in the world record spot. There was even a time in November 2004 where in just one day, two world record holding runs were made on the same day, with the second one cutting off over 5 minutes from the previous run. Since each category has been discovered and communities have formed around each, new routes and methods to cut off even more time have been discovered. For example, in the 16 star run category, the Lakitu skip to skip the Lakitu cutscene at the beginning of the game, bomb clip to get the behind chain chomps gate star incredibly quickly, and and cannonless glitch to uh get this star without using the cannon, I guess. In 16 star runs alone, crazy improvements have been made since the first world record, with the earliest 16 star run world record being set in June 2004 by Cyberrath at 26 minutes. The record has nearly been cut in half since, with Suiji currently holding the world record at 14 minutes and 25 seconds, set only 3 weeks before this voiceover. <laughs> Let's go! For the last 15 years, Super Mario 64 has had a large modding scene, in which players would modify parts of the game's code to change its gameplay. These mods have come a long way, from early game shark codes to tweak small bits of the game, to modern day ROM hacks that completely alter the core of Mario 64, almost creating an entirely new game. Interest in modding Super Mario 64 can be traced as far back as 1997 when cartridges for cheat codes like Game Shark and Game Genie were released for the Nintendo 64, and Mario 64 cheat codes were often shared on early gaming websites. A resurgence of sorts in the popularity of these Mario 64 cheat codes occurred in the late 2000s, as the codes would have bizarre, comedic effects on the game's visuals, audio, and movement. This new wave in popularity for old Mario 64 cheat codes was helped by the popularization of accessible Nintendo 64 emulators for computers, notably Project 64, which had GameShark cheat code capabilities built in. A lot of early Super Mario 64 videos on YouTube revolved around 
down these cheat codes. Let's take a look at one of those videos uploaded in 2007 to get a good idea of what messing with Mario 64 codes was like. While ROM hacking for games like the original Super Mario Bros had been done as far back as 1987 with Tonkachi Mario, using rudimentary tools which were insanely impressive from a technical standpoint at the time, Super Mario 64 ROM hacking didn't get its start until about 9 years after the game had come out, as there were little to no accessible tools for editing the game available to the public. As well, tools like hex editors were often used for ROM hacking titles from the NES or Game Boy, where the binary data of a ROM file is edited or moved around. This is very technical already, but it gets much worse. You start to see why no one was making Mario 64 ROM hacks with hex editors between 1996 and 2005 when you take into account that a Super Mario Bros ROM for the NES is 40 kilobytes, a Super Mario World ROM is 512 kilobytes, and then a Super Mario 64 ROM is 8 megabytes. Making a Super Mario 64 ROM hack was much more of a daunting task back then. Nintendo 64 emulators for Windows and Macintosh computers were also in their infancy. The first Nintendo 64 emulator was Project on Reality, released in 1998, which could only really run the intros of games and a few homebrew ROMs, until the owners of the project said, screw it, we're gonna actually make games for Nintendo. Nami 64 was initially released in December 1998, though it wasn't widely used until around late 1999. There was one of the first full Nintendo 64 emulators that could actually run the majority of titles. Ultra HLE was released in early 1999 and was so good that they got threatened with a lawsuit from Nintendo in just under a week. And finally, Project 64 was released in 2001 and is the emulator most people use to this day. It also helped to boost the popularity of Game Shark codes in the mid to late 2000s and was one big step towards the accessibility of Mario 64 ROM hacks. In August 2005, VL Tone, the creator of a variety of Nintendo related utilities and demos, posted a video to both Google Video, a now defunct video sharing website owned by Google, and YouTube, which was only made a few months prior to the video's upload. The short video, which didn't have any audio, showed someone playing Mario 64 as Luigi, which wasn't possible in the original game. For years, people speculated that Luigi could be unlocked with a variety of theories, which I'll get to later, and this video came as a surprise to many viewers as they didn't expect it to be a modded ROM. Walton Dell, the owner of a popular Mario 64 webpage, received many emails over the coming months about Luigi and Mario 64 being unlocked, though in the footage, VL Tone had edited the polygon data of Mario's character manually and changed the color and hat texture to make it appear as if he was playing Mario 64 as Luigi. This is what I'd like to classify as the very first Mario 64 ROM hack. Throughout 2006 and 2007, VL Tone created a few different minor ROM hacks and even announced the release of Toad's Tool 64, a Mario 64 level editing software with the ability to edit textures, objects and their behaviors, warps, music tracks, and more. VL Tone released the first hack created with the tool in early 2006 and in August 2007, Toad's Tool 64 would be released to the public. For the next few years, rudimentary ROM hacks would be made with Toad's Tool 64 such as Kaizo Mario 64, released in 2009 by Omega. Edge 29, a popular ROM hack that added and moved around different objects in each level to make Super Mario 64 tenfold more difficult. This era marks the popularization and start of accessible Super Mario 64 ROM hacking. Meanwhile, in 2008, a user named Frauber created a website where you would take notes on the inner workings and technical details of Super Mario 64. First, Frauber would release a tool for importing custom music in the form of .mml files into Super Mario 64 in January 2009. Three months later, he would create the first major ROM hack, The Missing Stars, with custom levels, music imported from other Mario games, new bosses, and more by manually modifying the original MIPS assembly code used to make Mario 64. Throughout the next few months, the ROM hack would gain popularity both on and off YouTube. In October, he would release the first version of an OBJ file importer, which would take levels to the, um, 
next level. This would allow users to make custom levels in Mario 64 ROM hacks with relative ease, as programs to create OBJ files like Blender and SketchUp were already quite accessible at this point in time. Throughout the next decade, the tools used to make Mario 64 ROM hacks would only improve. A large community behind hacking Mario 64 would form, and now that it's 2023, Mario 64 ROM hacks have not only increased so much in quality sense, but Mario 64 ROM hacks are more accessible than ever. In the late 2010s, Mario 64 was decompiled by a group of fan programmers, which led to players having a better understanding of the code of Mario 64 than ever before. This also led to way more advanced ROM hacks and the fan PC port being created. The rest of this chapter will be dedicated to highlighting impressive ROM hacks and the creators behind them. Team Cornersoft is a collective of Mario 64 ROM hackers who created two great hacks that I want to highlight here. Elise, a Yumaniki inspired ROM hack with 20 stars about a woman who wishes that she could stay asleep forever with super impressive visual design and level design, and Mario vs WarioWare, a Mario 64 ROM hack which is a recreation of WarioWare that throws Mario based mini games at you in a rapid back to back pace. Skellix's Star Road and Kei's Emanuar's Last Impact are some of the most well-known and highly acclaimed ROM hacks of Mario 64. These hacks boast 130 stars each with custom levels, new mechanics, unique plot lines and bosses, and additional stars to collect. Even after all these years, these two mods remain popular and iconic due to their positive reception since their release. While Mario 64 ROM hacks have definitely evolved far since their release, with Star Road turning 12 this year and Last Impact turning 7 this year, these two ROM hacks still hold up very well. Keys Emanuar is one of the most well-known ROM hackers who has made headlines across many gaming-centric news outlets for his impressive Super Mario 64 ROM hacks, one of the most notable being Last Impact, which I mentioned earlier. Some of the most well-known Keys Emanuar ROM hacks are games being remade in Mario 64, such as... <laughs> Portal in Mario 64, Mario Odyssey in Mario 64, Mario Maker in Mario 64, Mario World in Mario 64, Mario Sunshine in Mario 64, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time in Mario 64, and uh, Waluigi's Taco Stand. Very gently. Right. You can see there's a cat in here. You are asked to make a taco for your customer. And many more. One of his most impressive hacks so far is Return to Yoshi's Island, which is still a work in progress, but may be the best Mario 64 ROM hack period when it is finished, with a planned 165 stars, beautiful levels, completely new mechanics, and much more. Dimension or Dimension 1 is another one of my personal favorite Mario 64 ROM hacks, which was made by Team Hacker SM64 in 2022 for a ROM hack based game jam surrounding the theme of the number 1. In Dimension 1, you complete a variety of challenges centered around the number one. This hack is on the shorter side but is incredibly impressive on the visual end, and can even run on original Nintendo 64 hardware. The last thing I want to highlight in this chapter is the evolution of attempts at making Super Mario 64 a multiplayer experience. When Super Mario 64 was initially released, a big complaint about the game was its lack of a multiplayer mode or a mode similar to the two-player co-op seen in Super Mario World. Nintendo had even planned to create a multiplayer mode for Super Mario 64, though it was entirely scrapped. As far back as 2009, Farber was trying to make Mario 64 a multiplayer game, posting a few videos to his YouTube channel of demos and proof of concept versions of a multiplayer version of Mario 64. In 2012, Skellix, the ROM hacker who created Star Road, published a multiplayer version of Super Mario 64, with a two-player mode compatible with Netplay supported by a select few emulators. Let's retry that. Oh, no. I, <laughs> my animation's gone! What? Though the ROM hack Skellix had made had some limitations, it was incredibly impressive at the time of its creation as Skellix spent hours reverse engineering the original version of Mario 64 to make it work with Netplay. Five years later in 2017, ROM hackers Keza Manuar, Marshavolt, and Melon Speedruns released Super Mario 64 Online, a free to download program that allowed you to host servers on an emulated ROM of Mario 64 with servers being able to hold up to 20 four players at once. Each player could choose different player models compatible with Mario 64 and their own movesets, and even play a variety of game modes inside the program used for Mario 64 Online. The program struggled to stay up online throughout most of 2017 and 2018, as Nintendo had issued copyright strikes on the videos demoing it and promoting the download links for the program. In 2018, it was re-released as Net64 by ROM hacker Tornados. Net64 and Super Mario 64 Online were both critically acclaimed for the impressive amount of features 
features the extensive knowledge of how Mario 64 works in the to create the mod, and how it was essentially a dream come true for those who wanted a two-player co-op mode in Mario 64 when it initially came out. Despite the Nintendo 64 being long unsupported, fan programmers are using it to make fresh new experiences more than ever before.